iOS 18 is just around the corner and it brings with a lot of features which I cannot wait to try. Now with Apple Intelligence, we finally see Apple catching up with the AI race along with other tech giants such as Google, Facebook, you name it. Hey all, how it's going? This is George from TechRoll.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can run or possibly test iOS 18 on your phone. So let's take a look. Now, Apple introduced iOS 18 for the first time a few days ago, among with other products on the June Keynote 2024. iOS 18 comes with a lot of features, including Apple Intelligence and the ability to customize your home screen. Now, I know you're very excited to get your hands on with iOS 18 and be on the front line among the first people to get access to it. We need to check whether your phone is compatible with iOS 18. Now, luckily, Apple has made major changes in the compatible iPhones with iOS 18, starting with the iPhone 10s, well, a seven-year-old model, still supporting iOS 18, that's good news, all the way up to iOS 15. And luckily, me with my iPhone 10R, I'm still eligible to run iOS 18 on it. And now that being said, since you now know whether you can run iOS 18 or not on your phone, it's time to see how we can do this. Initially, the way we're going to update to iOS 18 beta is going to be the same as you update to any other iOS version that you have done in the past by going to settings, general, then you know the story. However, this is not the case with beta versions. By default, Apple hasn't configured iPhone models to receive iOS beta versions to update because we all know that beta versions are going to have bugs, they are luggy, they are you know, they're not perfect. So what we're going to do is we're going to configure your phone to receive the iOS 18 beta. And to do this, the only thing you have to do is to register to the Apple developer program. Don't worry, you don't have to be a developer. You don't have to write lines of code to, to do this. All you have to do is to simply go to your computer and then go to developer.apple.com and then just go on where it says account on the top right and just log in by using your Apple ID. And once you register, you don't really have to do anything. You don't need to purchase any memberships or anything. This is gonna be a free process. So pretty much you're basically done. But we know that when Apple releases beta versions, they're gonna be lucky for a reason because when Apple releases an iOS beta version of a software, iOS or macOS, they want people in the world to test their products. They basically referring mostly to developers, not to the public. So what we want to do is to make sure that we have all of our data backed up just in case you want to go back to the previous iOS version that you were, in this case, iOS 17, and restore it with your data. It's very crucial. You have to follow this step. Uh, otherwise, you're basically risking losing all of the data. Now, that being said, we're going to back up your phone by using your computer. It doesn't matter whether you have Mac or Windows, it's going to work in both ways. And all you have to do is to grab your charging cable and just connect it to your phone and make sure that you connect your charging cable to your computer. Now, if you have a USB and your MacBook or your laptop or your computer, whatever it is, only has USB-C ports, then you may need to grab an adapter which converts your USB into a USB-C. I have a link down in the description, the one I recommend, which is low price and it's also something I recommend. Otherwise, if you have USB-C, then you're just fine. Don't need to worry about this. Now, the next thing you need to do is to go back to your computer and then go on Finder. You should see something here, uh, an iPhone icon here with the name of your phone. Now, make sure you click on that. And this is going to load all the information of your phone. I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger so everything will be more visible. I know you're going to ask me, you want to tell me I have Windows. What can I do? I cannot do this. So if you have Windows, then don't worry because the process is very similar. Back to computer, just go on this link right here, download iTunes for Windows. It's free. The link is down in the description. And what you want to do is to scroll down and locate where it says Apple Devices app. And now this is new. Apple used to have the iTunes software for Windows, but now they changed it to Apple Devices app. And as you can see, this is the manager for your phone. Now you can do backups, you can restore, you can man you can transfer information from your Windows computer very effectively. So all you need to do is to just click on this link and this is gonna take you to the Microsoft 
uh, store and or everything um, and you should be able to install it right well as you can see this recommends that you have windows 10 now if you have something earlier than that let's go all the way down and go on where it says download itunes for windows from the microsoft store make sure that you're connected with your microsoft account so you'll be able to do that okay and that being said the process is entirely the same install the software and uh, just follow the exact steps that i am about to show you from now on so back to the phone information you see that we need to make sure that you're on the latest ios stable version okay stable ios version at the time of making this video iOS 17.5.1 is the latest stable OS out there. However, if you're not sure whether you're on the latest one, then grab your phone and then go on settings. Go to general and then go to software update. And here it should say that your system is up to date. However, if it doesn't show that and it shows that there's a latest version available, then make sure that you update to the latest OS version. Press and download and install, and then just proceed with the procedure. Now you'll need to leave the phone on the side so the installation is complete. If once this is done, then we are ready to move on on the next step. Now the next step is to check on how much available space you have on your Mac in order to perform the backup. We need to make sure that we have two things checked on our checklist. Number one is to check on our phone how much space you have consumed on your phone. And then if you have this amount of space plus a bit more available on your Mac in order to perform the backup. So again, back on your phone, just go to settings. And this time you're going to go to general and about, and then go and scroll down until you see where it says capacity and available. So in my case, as you can see, I have 256 gigabytes available space available only around 40 gigabytes. And what you want to do is to subtract capacity with available. And then you can estimate the amount of gigabytes that you need to have on your Mac in order to proceed with the procedure. In my case, I need about 218, but just gonna add a bit more. I'm just gonna say I need around 250 gigabytes available on my Mac to perform the backup. And obviously that's a lot of, a lot of space you need to have available in order for this to happen. But let's go ahead and check to see if, this, if I have this amount of space on my Mac. So you go back to your computer, Go to about this Mac, go to more info, and then scroll down to where the storage and you should see how much available space we have. And oops, <laughs> and as you can see, I only have around 15 to 16 gigabytes available, which is definitely not enough for this backup to work out. So that's why I would recommend you to either delete some stuff if you can on your Mac, but most, most of the cases you may not be able to, and if that's the case, then I highly recommend you to grab one of those external hard drives, which you can uh, buy online. In my case, I have a one terabyte external SSD. Uh, this is actually an NVMe, which I got for a good discount. So you can definitely get one of those things, or you can get an HDD, which is cheaper, but slightly slower for about 30 to $40. I have some links down in the description and also have an article on the top right of this video where I recommend you on my top choices for SSDs, external SSDs and external HDDs, which you can get. Sadly, Apple doesn't offer a traditional way of backing up your phone data on an external hard drive. So that's why I have made a video for both Mac and Windows. So do check these videos, videos out. And once you are all set up, then we can proceed. So I'm going to just close this down. Two more options. Make sure that this option is checked, that you're backing up your data on this Mac, not on iCloud, because this is not going to work. Make sure this is one is chosen. And encrypt local backup. You can, if you know that you're not going to forget your passwords, if you forget passwords and make sure that you uncheck this, you may to enter your current pass password on your iPhone backup to uncheck this if you already have passwords. Otherwise, I'll just leave this as it is. And finally, once you're ready, just press on backup now and the process will begin. Now, that being said, depending on how many data you have on your phone, this is going to be a lengthy process. It's going to take some time to, to complete. So I'll just leave my phone on the side until this process is done. And now once the backup is done, you can finally update to iOS 18 beta on your phone. So simply just grab your phone, go to settings, and then scroll the way down to general and then go back to software update and 
you should have another option saying beta updates as the second option. Tap on that and if not selected, make sure that iOS 18 developer beta is chosen. And when you go back, you should be able to have iOS 18 beta. All you have to do is just tap on download and install and then just enter your passcode and you should be good to go. And definitely do the update, make sure that you're charging your phone with the charging cable connected to the wall just to make sure that your battery is not going to run out to the update because if this happens, then your phone may end up not being responsive at all and you may have to restore it back to its original settings. Now, like I said, some issues may happen, but they're extremely, extremely unlikely, such as your phone being stuck during the update because iOS 18 is buggy. But if this happens, that's why we have the backup so you can always restore it with your backup. Now, one more thing I would like to mention is that, as I mentioned multiple times, iOS 18 is buggy, your phone may be unresponsive, and if you want to go back to iOS 17, that's actually possible because I'm currently working on a video on how to do this, and once ready will be available on the top right of the screen of the video just click on the link on the top right screen and you'll be able to see the video or in the video description down below and that's everything for this video i hope you enjoyed this video feel free to hit the like button if you found this video helpful and definitely share this video to your friends if you found this useful of course i would like to hear from you what's the main feature that you're looking forward from ios 18 to see and which features are you going to try first once you get your hands on with ios 18 let me know down in the comment section below and definitely and finally don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell right next to it in order to be the first person to receive notifications for our latest videos thanks for watching and as always i'm going to see you in my next video